right guys today we're going to be debunking some knife myths and the actual primary myth of this video is going to be talking about which one of these two knives that we have here today is more dangerous if i can open this one in the first place the balisong or the slip joint let's talk about it all right guys like i said i think that there is this myth this notion and this idea in the knife world and i've heard it expressed a lot in my youtube shorts especially where there's this notion that things like balisongs gravity knives otfs automatics switch blades whatever you like to call them and there are many different types of knives are somehow incredibly dangerous and this myth i think has gone even to the point where people believe that knife laws were created to because people were injuring themselves with things like balisongs or you know people too many people were going to the hospital so they were outlawed to protect people and i've done a previous video really talking about the history at least the american history um, or the u.s history about you know like why knife laws exist when they came into place and we'll kind of go over that briefly right now and essentially knife laws at least at the federal level were introduced in the late 1950s in 1958 to be exact primarily because there were a lot of street gangs um, that were using knives and they were actually preferentially using knives to commit um, crimes because firearms were deemed as too risky too loud and they would just attract too much attention right so a lot of um, these knife laws aimed at banning scary looking knives, things like automatic switchblades, balisongs, stuff like that. And so that's where a lot of the knife laws actually came from. <clears throat> so at least as far as the U.S. is concerned, it is not, or to my knowledge, there is no like knife laws, no knife laws were created in the U.S., especially at the federal level to, you know, stop people from owning knives because they were deemed too dangerous to the user. Like they weren't sending people to the hospital in high volumes and that was why they banned them or something like that. Besides really no laws are actually formed that way. So nice try internet, but uh, that is not actually the way that that worked. So anyways, um, a lot of the, the laws were actually pushed in a kind of facade or false way to try to, you know, make people in elected offices um, or seats look good. That aside, though, which one of these knives is objectively more dangerous? I think the answer is a lot tougher than it seems initially because I think a lot of people would say that a slip joint, especially by appearance, is the lesser of the dangerous knives. And certainly when you look at something like a, you know, balisong, you're like, well, look at that, you know, it uses gravity to open it. You have these two separate handles with this blade. If you grab the bite handle, you're going to get cut. You know, you have to use this latch to lock it in its open or closed state. And, you know, all these types of complexities. And I will give you this, I will say, if we were talking about maybe, you know, which knife is more complicated, definitely the Balisong has, um, I don't know if it has more moving parts, but I would say that at least when it comes to opening it, it has more moving parts because once again, this is a little bit more unpredictable if you don't know what you're doing with it. Um, and it can bite you if you, you know, aren't prepared or ready for what it can do. However, I will say that that is kind of what makes it safer. I think a lot of people forget that humans as a whole, as far as creatures go, can become very complacent and in previous videos especially shorts that i've done talking about slip joints being dangerous um, there are so many people that chime in the chime in to the comment section saying you know oh yeah i bit myself real bad you know a few years back with a slip joint or with a swiss army knife and i think that really kind of adds to this level of complacency when you see a knife that looks objectively looks objectively dangerous or complicated um, it's really like anything right you know if you see a manual vehicle right versus an automatic vehicle um, at least transmission wise right um, you, you know it takes more skill it takes more time it takes more mental focus to operate that vehicle because there's more moving pieces and when that 
kind of peace happens in your brain, you naturally are more active in the driving experience because you're more connected to the driving experience. And the same thing is true with knives. You know, when you have a more complex knife, oftentimes it's like, is there more danger to, you know, hurt yourself with it? Potentially, but I feel like that level of danger increasing also puts your brain at a higher level of saying like, okay, you know, you, my awareness is now increased because which handle is the bite handle? Which handle is the safe handle? How am I going to open this? How am I going to close this, you know? And so it's stuff like that that actually makes this a more safe knife because it's more dangerous because your brain's actively thinking more about the process as opposed to the slip joint where it's very easy with a slip joint to you know become lackadaisical and have that blade you know push right in on you it's easy to forget that this doesn't have a lock or doesn't have a safety stop on it so it can bite you more easily in addition to i will say something that i don't think gets enough airtime when it comes to a lot of traditional folding knives which this gec is among those is that most traditional folders have very poor opening ergonomics. I would say opening closing ergonomics. And what I mean by this is ergonomics in the traditional sense is when you hold the knife in your hand, how does that feel? Is it complete? Can you get all of your fingers around the handle? You know, what feels natural to you, right? So that's the traditional sense of ergonomics, but there's also another form of ergonomics when it relates to especially folding knives and knives in general is opening ergonomics. And so when you look at a knife like this GEC, it has a very slick handles. There's no texturing, it's a very small handle width, and then you also have to look to your blade. This blade uses a very shallow nail nick, and that's all you get for this, right? This is the way that you have to open this knife, and to be honest, of all the knives in my collection, I have cut myself on this knife more than any of the others because of this opening mechanism, because there's so little traction. Like, you can only put your nail into this blade, right? That's the only way to open it. So your contact patch with this knife when opening it is pretty much just your nail. So you have a very low contact patch here, mixed with a very low contact patch here. And what that can lead to is half opening a knife, exposing that cutting edge and slipping off of it, right? It's very easy to do. And I'm not going to demonstrate here because I don't feel like cutting myself, but it can definitely happen. In addition to when it comes to half stops like this on many slip joints, you have to then open the knife to this half stop Grab it with your hands, which once again, or fingers, I should say, which once again, isn't a huge contact patch and push it into the open position. So not a very open friendly knife or not a very intuitively easy knife to open. And when you actually look at the process of how close I was to the physical cutting edge on that slip joint, let's take this guy back, for instance, the Balasong, right? Okay, so how close do I have to really get to this blade to open it, right? So I use gravity to open and close that cutting edge. But this whole time, objectively speaking, my hand is not coming anywhere near that cutting edge, right? Because I can just let go of this bottom handle, the bite handle, move it out of the way. And by the time I re-grab that bite handle, the blade is completely enclosed in a titanium handle, right? So it's not going to bite me. Now, some people might say, oh, but what if you make a mistake and you know you do something like this? This is true, it can happen, but once again, with proper knowledge and proper use, that, that training kind of becomes intuitive and you physically feel where that blade is. Luckily with most bow songs especially, the blades are so thick, so meaty, that you know where that blade is. You can physically feel where it is. If it's not out in front of you, you know if it's like, you know if that hand, first handle goes forward like this, like you can physically feel the weight of that blade, right? So anyways, it's, it's far more intuitive in my opinion to open a knife like this because your handle is um, protecting you. That bite handle used correctly is ultimately protecting you from that cutting edge. And even looking at other knives, say you're like, okay, you know, maybe the balisong can be argued that it's dangerous, right? Let's take other locking knives, for instance. This guy is a tactile knife, and it's particularly safe because now, once again, 
I'm talking about opening and closing and my fingers having to come into contact or close contact with the cutting edge, not at all. I have this thumb stud, it kicks the blade right out and when I wanna close it, all I have to do is pull back on this crossbar and swing the knife back. In that whole process, my fingers are not coming anywhere near the cutting edge. So ultimately, I will say things like traditional folders, like slip joints, I think are very deceptive because of people's perceptions of what a slip joint is. A lot of people will perceive, you know, slip joints and they're like, oh, you know, that's what my grandpa carried or that's what I carried when I was a boy scout. And, you know, so how could it possibly be dangerous, right? Well, you know, it's, it might not be the most dangerous knife out there, but I would still argue that slip joints, Swiss Army knives, by and large, when it comes to the actual knife portion of a Swiss Army knife, are some of the most dangerous blades out there that you can get because they really, once again, their unassuming nature leads to a natural, like, lackadaisical attitude to approach that knife, right? Like, you're not, you're not treating the knife with as much respect as you probably should. In addition to that, there's no mechanism to really stop the blade from folding in on you. And in addition to that, there's almost always poor opening ergonomics on just about any, you know, slip joint knife out there. The ones that might be the exception to this rule, and I will gladly say that, are things like the Spyderco UKPK or UK pen knife, um, and a handful of others that use, you know, dedicated opening mechanisms. Those have a better opening ergonomic situation. So I will give things like the Spyderco UKPK a, a pass, but like I said, the primary majority of things like Swiss Army knives, like Victorinoxes, like traditional um, folders are going to have very poor opening ergonomics. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.